Deep learning has revolutionized various fields, from image recognition to natural language processing. But despite the widespread success of the models, the inner workings, how it actually comes to its conclusion, still pretty much a mystery. We call it a black box because you can't see inside and understand what it's doing. However, recent research is bridging this gap. By connecting deep learning with approximation theory through spline functions and operations. So even though this video is gonna be a little bit abstract compared to some of the others, it might be worth watching if you wanna think about what spline functions really are and how they give us a deeper intuition into how artificial intelligent models actually do the amazing things that we're seeing right now. And maybe it will even give us some intuition into what's happening up here in the human brain. So first, let's talk about approximation theory. So the branch of mathematics, or kind of more like geometry called approximation approximation theory is about drawing straight lines or simple objects to approximate something more complicated. Imagine you have this very detailed and super complex giant page from a huge coloring book. But imagine that you could only fill in the blank spaces with shapes like triangles, squares, and circles. And the goal would be to just use these simple shapes to try to approximate what the full complexity of the real image is. And in mathematics, approximation theory does something similar. It takes what in reality are extremely complex mathematical functions. That represents the true nature of the coloring book page we talked about. And if you do it right, sometimes you can get approximately the same answer, but using way less computation and having something that you can actually understand. And there's always a trade off to this, you're always trying to find the balance between simplicity and accuracy. So you want your simple shapes or functions to capture as much of the original image as possible without making it so complicated that a computer can't solve the problem for you or making it so simple that what you get out doesn't approximate the original image. And this is important in fields like engineering, computer science, and physics, where working with these simpler problems can make solving the problem a lot simpler. Now in terms of AI research, the important part about approximation theory is usually put towards trying to understand what we call the error in the model. Imagine a deep learning model that's meant to classify different images. Unless it's getting a perfect 100 score, what little things it gets wrong is called the error, and we want to measure what that is, but there's only so much exactness that we can really get before it just becomes computationally a wasteful. So we approximate it and then take a guess as how these approximations converge into the true function. So this is where spline functions and operators come into play. Now you can think of a spline function as like a flexible ruler or a bendy string, maybe a little bit like a rubber band or a rope, something that is kind of like the way there's some looseness to the images on my shirt here. Or if you've ever used something like the pen tool in Photoshop or Illustrator where you can sort of smooth out a line by making some dots and then kind of like grabbing the handles and pulling them into some sort of a shape that you desire. So imagine a sheet of paper where you put two different points. Just take your pencil and like draw a couple circles and then put the string in such a way that it kind of whatever the shape is at some point crosses both of those two dots. In these gigantic deep learning models, we know where some things are specifically located. Like in a large language model, we might know where a token or a word phrase is exactly in the multi-dimensional space. But the benefit of a spline is that it can touch both of those points, it can move around, it can kind of wiggle in and out of where it needs to go to without making a sharp curve or a bend or a break. And mathematicians can learn and try out different equations to bend the spline in different ways, sometimes finding more optimal ways to connect two parts of the system. This is something a lot of video game engineers are already super familiar with. Because in computer graphics and video games, a lot of smooth lines that you interact with are actually created in this way. Now, let's talk about this paper. It is called A Spline Theory of Deep Networks. Now, the main finding in this paper is that there is a new way to try to figure out how it is exactly that these deep networks come to the conclusions that they do. And that's by trying to understand the complicated shape of the network using something called max affine spline operators. And by using this method, these researchers were able to show that like deep down in the guts of the neural network, there is a shape. And I think about it a little bit like when you're skiing how your skis can make grooves in the snow and then the next skier tends to like fall into those same grooves and it gets like deeper and deeper and deeper. As these models are learning from all sorts of data and finding patterns, there is this multidimensional shape that's just represented by numbers, but it also has a groove, a kind of like river that has been carved into the stone that actually can be described 
with splines. So this paper shows how the deep learning networks have these grooves and they actually call them a template. A template is based on the data that it's received and then they compare new data that they put into the system to these templates, making predictions about where it's gonna basically like slide through or how it's gonna be shaped. And the more accurate that they are with their predictions, the more we know that those grooves really exist. Now, and, and there's a lot to think about here because we as people, have a lot of patterns in the ways that we think, the ways that we communicate. We've grown up with certain strategies in life and how we interact with people. And in a sense, the multidimensional connections that are up here in our brain might have something inside of them that could be sort of predicted by these splines if we ever had a digital version. So we basically have these grooves and it's easy to fall into them. That's why we fall into the same behavior. We have the same addictions. We've grown up with certain strategies in life and how we interact with people. And in a sense, the multidimensional connections that are up here in our brain might have something inside of them that could be sort of predicted by these splines if we ever had a digital version. So we basically have these grooves. I mean, think about how our attention is diverted to things that we've never seen before, never experienced before that seem out of place and how quickly we can just ignore, become complacent to things that we're familiar with. I've also read about how memories in a sense aren't necessarily like remembered the way a videotape would actually have a record of something as they are recreated from grooves that have been like carved in from emotion. And from this understanding, these researchers have even thought of different ways that we could start to improve the deep learning models that we have today. They recommend adding a special kind of adjustment to the learning process to make these templates more distinct from one another. And this small change could help networks classify things more accurately and reduce the chances of fitting it too closely to the data, a problem known as overfitting. And in theory, that could all be done without any need to change the network's basic structure. It's just learning more about it internally and trying to make adjustments to fix those internal splines. Also, by observing how these splines line up, these like ski grooves in the snow, we're starting to learn more about how different layers of a system might fit together, basically how early patterns are found and then other patterns learn patterns in the patterns. Okay, so now let's talk about this word. What is a maxafine spline operator anyways? Now remember, a spline means a smooth curve and it's made by a polynomial function. And these can typically be used for smooth and flexible shapes in computer graphics and modeling and data interpolation, all that stuff that we talked about before. Now when a fine type of transformation is a linear transformation that preserves some aspects of the original shape. You might be preserving the straight lines between the points or if it's a plane, you might be preserving the plane as you rotate it in different dimensions. Okay, but these researchers are using the term maxafine. So what does that mean? Well, in the context of spline operators, the max implies that they're taking the maximum of the function. So you can maybe turn it, shift it, rotate it. We're saying go to the max, take it as far away as you can before that stops being a certain type of transformation. And from what I understand, that's because the researchers want to know what these shapes look like. So we're like, take, take them to the max and tell me what we can learn about, about the entire, entire thing. thing. But this is cool because it matters that approximation theory can actually be connected to deep learning. It gives us a new tool to peer inside of these AI systems. And this could lead to all sorts of different shapes that we could start to understand. Maybe there's a certain pattern that happens with these spline functions long before some sort of emergent property happens, something that might be dangerous, something that might misalign an AI system. Maybe soon we'll be able to take 3D images of the human brain and try to like digitalize them and find spline functions that help us understand how people think or what kind of ways that their brains have patterns built into them. For example, the researchers show a few times where in this paper there can be a specific condition where the output of a deep neural net is simply the affine transformation of the input. Think about that. like. You take the input, you already know the shape or the curve that's gonna describe how it's manipulated before it comes out the other end. That's a description of what goes in and what comes out through a complicated neural network that somebody can make an accurate prediction from a simple equation. So a big complicated deep neural network trained on all this information might actually hone in on a single dependent, like a single ski groove that gives you an explanation of where the skier starts on the mountain and where they're gonna end. If you know that, you have a simple calculation that can do that same thing without training a big neural network. They also propose adding a new penalty term that would actually be given to the cost function, which is part of the error that comes 
out of a system. And this term would be comparing what they were calling basically the ski grooves to fit in a way that they're orthogonal to one another, which is something we can understand with the visual imagery. And I guess it improves the classification of a system overall on top of it. How cool is that? It's like we just dig a trench even deeper where we know that the ski groove already is and then boom, let all the data just flow right through. Anyways, it's awesome to share any new research that helps us peer into these deep neural networks, try to understand what the heck is going on in there because one of the biggest risks to our humanity is that we have these crazy capabilities. We know how they work and what they're capable of doing for us like financially and as a society, but it gets out of hand because we truly don't know what it's doing. And eventually there's implications to that level of ignorance. And some of those implications might be things that we really don't want to deal with. And if you like this content, draw a spline between the subscribe button and the like button. Help me get to my next goal, 10,000 subscribers.